Welcome to part three of this Statistics Made Easy series. And here we're gonna push things even further. So what do we know so far? We know that LeBron James is 206 centimeters tall. We also know that the mean height for players in the NBA is 200 centimeters. Finally, we know that the standard deviation for player heights is seven centimeters. So with all of that information, we are going to answer two key questions. Number one, how many standard deviations from the mean is LeBron James. And if we can figure that out, then we'll be able to answer question number two, which is what proportion of NBA players are as tall or taller than LeBron? So let's do this. Let's start with question one. And since we know those three bits of information over to the right, so LeBron's height, the mean height for players in the NBA, and the standard deviation, this is actually nice and easy. We just need to take LeBron's height and from it, we need to subtract the mean height of all of the players in the NBA. Once we've done this, we then need to divide that by the standard deviation. So let's do this for real. LeBron's height of 206 centimeters minus the mean height of 200 centimeters, all divided by the standard deviation of seven centimeters. So 206 minus 200 on the top there means this simplifies down to six over seven. So what we're saying here is LeBron is six centimeters taller than the mean height and the standard deviation of our data is seven centimeters. So we would expect him to be somewhere just under one standard deviation above the mean. And that is absolutely true. Six divided by seven is equal to 0 0.86. Putting that in terms of our question, we can now say that LeBron's height of 206 centimeters is 0.86 standard deviations above the mean height in the NBA. Now, a couple of quick notes on this before we move on. Firstly, in a case where LeBron or any other player we were looking at was shorter than the mean height, this would all still work. We would just be taking the mean of 200 centimeters away from a number smaller than that, which would give us a negative result. And we'd end up calculating how many standard deviations that height was below the mean. Secondly, this value of 0.86 is what is known in the world of normal distribution as a z-score. Keep that name in mind as we'll see it and metrics similar to it as we progress through this series. Anyway, amazing work, we are halfway there. Let's now take on that second question that we had, which was what proportion of NBA players are as tall or taller than LeBron? And looking at the plot that we have on screen, we can think of this as being represented by this area here. So our task is to figure out how big that area is. To do this, we need the probability density function for our distribution. For ease, in this video, we are not going to work with the formula for that function itself. Instead, we will simply utilize a readily available lookup table called the standard normal lookup table, which contains all of the information that we need. And what this table provides us is for any z-score that we put in, it gives us the proportion of observations that lie between the mean and our observation. So remembering that our z-score for LeBron was 0.86, we first need to head down to 0.8. And then because we're specifically dealing with 0.86 in our example, we then need to head across to 0.06. And the intersection of those two will give us what we need. Now, just to be completely clear, the reason we've gone down to 0.8 and then across to 0.06 is because our z-score was 0.86. This table just operates as a matrix that allows us to find any two decimal place z-score. So at the intersection of those two values, we arrive at 0.3051. And like I just mentioned, this number represents the proportion of observations that will exist between the mean and our z-score. In other words, the area between the dotted lines there accounts for a proportion of 0.3051 of the observations. Or in more intuitive terms, and in relation to our specific example, this area represents 30.5% of the players in the NBA. So we haven't yet answered our specific question of how many players are as tall or taller than LeBron, but we're getting closer. In part two of this series, we discussed that since a normal distribution is symmetrical, we know that 50% of observations lie on each side of the mean. And this is extremely useful knowledge, as it means that we can now calculate that 50% plus 30.5% 
will equal 80.5% of the players. In other words, LeBron James is as tall or taller than around 80.5% of players in the NBA. But that still doesn't answer our specific question. We wanted to know how many players were taller than him. Luckily for us, this is super easy to calculate based on what we know so far. To do this, we can just do 100%, so all players in the NBA, minus 80.5%. The proportion of players that we calculated LeBron was as tall or taller than. And that equals 19.5%. And that is the answer to our question. Around 19.5% of players in the NBA are as tall or taller than LeBron James. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is pretty awesome. And the knowledge of how to apply something like this is so, so valuable, especially as you build towards concepts such as hypothesis testing, where we're looking at the differences between the means of two distributions and trying to ascertain whether we believe they truly are different. So that is it for part three. I hope you enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed running through it with you. In the next video, we will be broadening our horizons and looking at other types of commonly used distributions. I cannot wait for this, so I will see you there.